once again welcome back with another interesting and vital class which i am going to discuss of your class 11 mathematics okay chapter 1 set theory okay and in this class i am going to discuss the types of sets okay and this is the second part of my class set theory okay and which i am going to discuss in the first part already and it has been discussed the introduction set theory and what do we mean by set and what are the different notation of the set how to represent the set and also you have done exercise 1.1 of your Addisoma math book right and this is a class where you will get and all the basic concept of the set theory this is the second part of the class okay understand so i hope you will take interest and eagerness for the class till the last moment of the class you will watch it and it is a kind of point of learning you will get every details okay of the basic concept of the set theory that is the types of set okay so in this class i am going to discuss types of set and in the following points i am going to discuss these are the different kind of sets first of all is the cardinal number of sets singleton set finite set infinite set empty set or null sets or void set non empty sets subset and sub superset proper subset equal set on equal sets right equivalent sets this is another important concept over the set theory overlapping sets design sets universal sets and power set so these are the most fundamental concept of the set theory which cover entire part of the set okay basic concept types of set which i am going to discuss okay and along with the suite of examples Venn diagrams okay understand let's see uh, let us see the first point and the cardinal number of set what is cardinal number of set okay the first point basic concept definition of cardinal number of set it is saying the total number of elements in the given set is known as cardinality of the set. Okay. The total number of elements in the given set uh, is called cardinality of the set. Right. The cardinality of the set A is denoted by N of A. Suppose for example, the set A contains the element 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, so the cardinal cardinality of the set A, the total number of element of the set A is equal to n of A is 5. Very simple concept. The how many elements a set contains is known as cardinality of the set. The cardinal number of set or cardinality of the set. Right? Another example, suppose the set B contains A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So how many elements are there? Yes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Very simple. So, the cardinality of the set B is N of N of B is 7. Right? Second point, the singleton set. A set that has only one element is called singleton set or also called a unit set. Set having only one element. Example, the set A x says that x is an integer between 7 and 9. So, what is the integer between 7 and 9? If you write in the builder method, it will, the element will be 8. So, it has only how many element? One element. So, this is called a singleton set. Same the set A having only one element. Similarly, the set B, x says that x is a natural number and x is less than 2. What is the natural number less than 2? If you write in the Roster methods, it will write and the set B is equal to one element. The element is one. So, the set B has only one element. So, uh, both the set are singleton set because the set B has only one element, the set A has only, only one element. Very simple concept. Okay. Next point, finite set. So, what is finite set? A set having countable or finite number of elements is called finite set. It means if you are able to count how many elements 
a set has that such type of set is said to be finite set the cardinality of the finite set can be determined because we can say how many elements the set has the finite set has so if the number of elements of the set can be determined then such type of set is said to be a finite set for example the set c in the builder form written x such that x is a prime number less than 25 so if you write in the rooster methods then the elements are you can clearly see the elements how many elements are there and you can find out how many elements there are nine elements because the cardinality of the set c n c is equal to nine and we are able to find out the number of element of the set c so the set c is a finite set it has nine elements so the set c is a finite set infinite set okay a set with an infinite number of elements and you cannot find out how many elements the set has the cardinality of the set cannot be determined for example the set d x says that x is a natural number what are the natural number if write in the builder method say in the rooster method you see the elements are 1 2 3 4 etc so clearly this is an infinite set because you cannot find out how many elements the set has because the dot sign shows the set is a what infinite set the cardinality of the set cannot be determined the set d is an infinite set because it has infinite number of elements and the cardinality of the set cannot be determined right another example of infinite set the set n 1 2 3 4 that that is an infinite set in set of integer okay is an infinite set here another set v you see is also infinite set because we cannot determine we cannot find the number of elements of the set they have infinite number of elements the elements are uncountable we cannot count if we can count during the process of counting the process of counting the counting counting process will never to an end the counting process will never end we cannot say how many elements the set has and the cardinality of the set cannot be determined ok students right here is another set x set c x such that x is an integer is an infinite set next point empty set or null set or void set what is empty set very important point empty set a set that does not contain any element is called an empty set or null set An empty set is denoted using the symbol phi. It is also read as phi. Cardinality of the null set n of phi is equal to 0. And you can write the set m is equal to phi. Okay. And it is a null set. The set x y says that y belongs to n. y is greater than y. Is it possible a natural number is greater than itself? It is never possible. It means the set X does not have any element. So, this is an example of null set phi set. Right? Non empty set. A set having one or more than one element is called a non empty set. For example, the set A is equal to X says that X belongs to N, X is less than 2 is a non empty set because it has one element another set v is equal to y such that y square minus 1 is equal to 0 you will solve y square minus 1 is equal to 0 and you can convert the set into from builder method to rooster methods the element will be 1 minus 1 is a non empty set ok the cardinality of non empty set is never 0 because it does at least contain one or more than one element right 
सबसेट एंड सुपरसेट वेरी इंपोर्टेंट कंसेप्ट अबाउट द सेट थ्योरी सबसेट एंड सुपरसेट इट हैज बीन एक्सप्लेन सो विविडली ओके सो लुक एट हियर फॉर टू सेट्स ए एंड बी इफ एवरी एलिमेंट ऑफ सेट ए इज प्रेजेंट इन द सेट बी देन द सेट ए इज द सबसेट ऑफ सेट बी इफ ए इज द सबसेट ऑफ बी देन इट कैन रिटर्न एज ए सबसेट ऑफ बी इफ ए इज द सबसेट ऑफ बी देन वी से b is a superset superset of a and is written as b is a superset of a and this is the symbol of subset and this is the symbol for superset consider the set a is equal 1 2 3 another set b is equal 1 2 3 4 5 6 here you see clearly a is a subset of b here a is a subset of b means all the element of the set A are present in the set B, right? Understand? Since all the element of the set A are in the set B, so A is a superset of B, and since all the elements are contained in B, the set B, so B is the superset of A. So here, B is the superset of A denotes that B is the superset of A. So consider the set A is equal one two three. Another set B is equal one two three four five six. Here you see clearly since one belongs to A, since A is a subset of B, so one belongs to A, one is also belongs to B. It means two belongs to A. It implies that two also belongs to B. Three belongs to A. It implies that three also belongs to B. Here you see A is a subset of B. Why? Because all the elements of A are also the element in the set B. Okay, all the elements are contained in the set B, so B is the superset of A, and A is the subset of B. So every element in A is an element of set B, so the set B is called superset of A. And this is the notation of the superset. You will see the diagram, Venn diagram here. Look at here. Here the set A is the oval shape. Yellow structure is inside the red structure, red oval shape. Here we clearly see here A is the subset of B, A is the part of B, and B is the superset of A. Right? A is the subset of B. Uh, naturally, in Odia we say A B is the superset. B is the superset of A. In Odia, you can say B A R O D I S E T. For Odia, what I am just remember, okay? Look at your Venn diagram. Here is the set B. Here is the set A. You see, inside the set B and what is the the yellow structure or white structure of A is there. So since B, it clear that B is Uh, a is contained in B, and all the elements of A are in B. So you see, B is equal one, two, three, four. These are the elements. Suppose and A is equal one, two. Then you see clearly B is a superset of A, and A is a subset of B. Right? So one of the interesting Venn diagram. With the help of the Venn diagram, also you can represent, you can clearly understand about the. Basic concept of the set theory. Venn diagram is the important part through the diagram, through the figure, and we can explain. Okay, the basic concept of the set theory. We clearly understand the set A is a subset of set B from the Venn diagram, right? Since a set is a well-defined collection of object or elements grouped together within the basis. It can also be disintegrated into small set of its own called subset. Mathematically, a set A is referred to as the subset of another set B if every element of the set A is also an element of set B. Once again, to give the idea about the subset, here is the subset. Once again, another interesting example. 
considered a set A such that A is the set of all people living in your city of Adrak. Another set B, the set of your family members. You see now, here B is the subset of A because each member of your family is also the resident of the city of Adrak. You live in. Every member, family members of your family, every family members, okay, are the part of the city of Adrak. Because you are staying in Vadrak, living in Vadrak. So, here B is a subset of A and you see every element of the set B is a part of the numerous element belong to set A. Thus, B is definitely a subset of A. Let's another set E is equal to set of all even numbers. To clear understanding about the subset, more example of the subset. Another set N is the set of all natural numbers. Clearly you see, the set E is a subset of the set N. With all even natural numbers are contained in the set N. And all the elements of the set E are also the element of the set N. But all the elements of the set N are not the element of the set E. It means N contains E, but E does not contain N. That's why E is a subset of the natural number set of natural number n. Here is the Venn diagram. Look at here. Here is the set of natural number. Here is the set of even natural numbers. Clearly you see the yellow structure is inside the red structure, red oval structure. So clearly you can see clear understanding the E is a subset of n. Yes or no? The set E is a subset of set of natural number. Okay? Look at the Venn diagram. Right? I hope you will understand the concept about the idea of subset. Here, n is a superset of E. If E is a subset of n, set E is a subset of n, then n is a superset of E. Right? Property of subset. It is interesting to note that every set is a subset of itself. E is a subset of E. Why? Because all elements of set are also in the set A. That's why every set is a subset of itself. Very important point. Every set is a subset of itself. Since empty set, null set or void set has no element, so the void set is a subset of every set. If X belongs to A, that implies X belongs to B, then A is a subset of B. This is one of the important properties also theorem. Here I am going to explain. If x belongs to A, even x is an element of A, then x is also an element in the set B, then A is a subset of B. This is the condition of the subset. If x is the element of the set A, then x is also the element of the set B, then A is a subset of B. The general formula, very interesting formula, the number of subsets of a given set A with n elements, suppose the set has n elements, the total number of elements, very interesting formula, note down here, 2 to the power n, including the set A and the phi set. Right? So, if A is equal to ABC, suppose the set A, 3 elements are there. So, the cardinal of the set A is what? n of A is 3. So, total number of subset, including the set n phi, is 2 to the power n, using the formula, 2 to the power 3 is equal to 8. Understand? How many elements, how many subsets a set as you can determine using the formula 2 to the power n. There is also an interesting derivation. Why the total number of subset of a given set is 2 to the power n, I will discuss in the next class. This is one of the very important theorem and which I am going to discuss. Superset. In mathematics, superset is a set of con set contains all elements of another set. Once again, same thing I am going to discuss here. To make you clarity about the subset and superset, we know that if B lies in A, then it means that A contains B, yes or no? In other words, if B is a subset of A, then A is equal to what? Superset of B, naturally. More precisely, if set B is a subset of A, then A is also superset of B. Right? 
look at here here is the set a here is set b here the a is the super set of b because all the elements of b are in the set a right so you can write a is a subset of a is a is super set of b because you see the whole structure yellow structure a is and red structure red oval structure is inside the yellow structure it means all the elements of b are in the set a so a is a super set of b property of super set okay note down here every set is a super set of a null set or void set it means a is a super set of phi since phi has no elements since every set is a subset of itself then every set is also a super set of itself a is a super set of a a is a super set of phi right okay here some example i have discussed here suppose if a set a is father mother brother sister this is family the set a is the family members okay father mother brother sister set b is the sister can you see how b is subset of a look at here because the set b sister is a part of the family member yes or no right the set a represents your family members and set b represents single element is your sister and by the definition of subset each element of the subset is included in the other set here all the element of the set b are the element of the set a and the element sister is a part of your family that's why b is a subset of a once again you see the venn diagram clearly it has been nicely it has been done and this venn diagram clearly show that b is a subset of a right here the sister is a part of the family member that's why the set b is a subset of set a right okay another question here i am discussing the set a is equal to x such that x is an even natural number the set b is equal to y such that y is a natural number determine who is the subset here look at here diagram n diagram yes here the set a and the green part is set b green oval structure clearly the green oval structure is inside the yellow oval structure it means all the element of b are in set a okay here the set a is 2 4 6 8 etc the set b is equal to 1 2 3 4 up to etc so clearly that all the element of the set a are included in the set b so the set a is this okay the set the set b is the subset of a yes or no the set a is the sub sorry the set a is the subset of here the set a is the subset of b look at here understand here this is the uh, this will be this is the this will be really uh, there is some good here here and this is this is the you see the set is even natural number the set b is the natural number so this set will be a there is a mistake in naming okay right and this set is b this set is b can you change right here a is the subset of b because a is the set of even natural numbers and set a is the natural numbers so all elements of the set a are in set b that's why a is a subset of b once again check it rectify the diagram in the naming okay understand clear so you can cross this one this one you can cross right proper subset another important problem is what is proper subset a proper subset of a set is a subset of the set b if all the element of the set a are in the set b but at least one of the element of the set b 
are not in the set A. It means that A and B are not equal. A is not equal to B. All the elements of the of A are in B. At least one of the element B are not in the set A. Then you can say A is a proper subset of B. Suppose for example, if A is equal to 1, 3, 5, the set B is contains 1, 5. You see, here you see, what are you looking here? Here B is the subset of A, with all the elements of B are in A, because the and A is the superset of B. Because why? The element 3 is not in the set B. That's why B is the proper subset. The proper set is also subset. Proper B is the proper subset of A. We can also say B is the subset of A. Every proper subset is a subset. But difference is that B is the proper subset of the set A. Very important point. Look up. Because the element 3 okay, are not in the set one of the element of the set A not in the set B. Here A is the superset of B. Okay, because 3 belongs to the set A, but 3 does not belong to the set B. So if one of the elements of A are not in the set B, then the set B is known as proper subset of the set A. Okay, don't confuse here. The proper subset is also subset, but the condition is that the old one, at least one of the element of the set A are not in the set B. Here you see, 3 belongs to A, but 3 does not belong to B. So, B is the proper subset of the set A. Hence, B is the proper subset of the set A. Right? What is the proper subset versus subset? And for subset, for two sets A and B, the set A is a subset of the set B. If every element in the set A is also in the set B, it is written as A is a subset of B. Proper subset for sets A and B. The set A is called proper subset of B. If every element of the set A is also in the set B, but set A does not equal to the set B. And here A is a proper subset of the set B. And one of the element of the B are not in the set A. It means clear that in proper subset, two subsets are never equal. Okay? So if one of the set is a, a is a subset of B, A is also proper subset of B. And condition is that one of the element of the set B are not in the set A. Is not in the set A. So this is the condition, right? Understand? And A is a subset of B, A is also proper subset of B, every proper subset is also subset. The condition is that one of the element of the set B is not in the set A and two sets are unequal. Right? Suppose if A is equal to ABC, then the number of proper subset of A is what? 2 to the 3, how many proper subset is there? 2 to the 3 minus 1, which is 8 minus 1, so an interesting point. Total number of proper subset of A. 2 to the 3 minus 1, which is 7. Total number of subset what? 2 to the 3. Total number of proper subset is 2 to the 3 minus 1, which is 8 minus 1, 7. This is another formula. Important points. How to find total number of proper subset? This is clearly the differences between the proper subset and subset. Okay? Another important points equal sets. If two sets have same element in them, then they are called equal sets. For example, suppose the set A is 1, 2, 3. And the set B is how many elements? Also 1, 2, 3. Clearly, see that every element of the set A are in the set B. And every element of the set B are also elements set A. In this case, we can say, yes, the set A and set B are equal sets. And if the two sets are equal, we can represent it clearly by giving the equal sign A is equal to B. If two sets are equal, then their cardinality of the set is always same. The element will same and their cardinality will be also same. No doubt here. Okay? It is one of the important theorem of equal sets. 
let us see if a is a subset of b and b is a subset of a then prove that a equal to b this is one of the important points theorem simple theorem for you and give you that a is a subset of b as per the definition since a is a subset of b suppose if x belongs to a then x belongs to b yes or no because a is a subset of b yes or no right similarly every element of the set a or the element of the set b it is clearly understood because a is a subset of b and again given that b is a subset of a since b is a subset of a if x belongs to b suppose x is an element of the set b then is also element of the set a x is also element of the set a it means if x belongs to b then x belongs to also a as per the definition because b is a subset of a with all the element of the set b are also the element of the set a it means every element of the set b are also the element of the set a so from these two points it is clearly understood that the two sets are equal a is equal to b so condition remember students and if a is a subset of b and b is a subset of a then prove that a equal to b two sets are equal this is one of the important theorem and property of the equal sets no doubt and this will be helpful in solving in proving the various statement while you are discussing the set operation while proving the various statement of set operation de morgan's law suppose so many uh, mathematical set theory operation we have to discuss and you have to verify the statement you have to prove the statement and this concept most useful if a is a subset of b and b is a subset of a then a equal to b understand right note down let's see proceed another concept that is the on equal sets if two sets of at least one different element then they are on equal sets suppose the set a is equal to 1 2 3 and the set b is 2 3 4 you see here a 4 is an element in the set b but 4 is not an element in the set a that's why both sets are unequal a is not equal to b and you can write okay a is not equal to b by giving not equal to sign right understand very simple definition concept and this is one of the important vital concept equivalent set equivalent set one of the vital concept of the set theory okay let's see two sets a and b are said to be equivalent if they have the same cardinality if the it means the number of element of the set a is equal to the number of element in the set b then the two sets are said to be equivalent set in general we can say two sets are equivalent to each other if the number of elements in both the sets are equal and it is not necessary that they are the same element or they are a subset to each other okay the, the cardinality of the set must be equal their element may be differ or may be same but if the total number of element of one set a is equal to the total number of elements in the set b another set b then the both set are said to be equivalent set in equivalent set the number of element must be equal equivalent set are represented by an equivalent sign okay just by similarity symbol and congruent symbol an example is there suppose a is equal to 1 2 3 4 b is equal to a b c d two sets are here can you see the number of element of the set a which is 4 and number of element of the set b which is also 4 you see the number of element of the set a is equal to number of element of the set b it means n of a is equal to n of b is equal to 4 they have the same cardinality that's why the set a and b are said to be equal set equivalent set the set a equivalent to set b and this is the sign uh, to the to represent the equivalent sets right here is the venn diagram of the equivalent set interesting diagram okay here is a set a here is another set b okay and here one is an element of the set a and which corresponds to another element of the of the set b here is another element two of the set a who is correspond to the set b here three 
corresponds to the element C of the set B. Okay, and the four, the element four of the set A corresponds to the set element D of the set B. <coughs> It means you see that an interesting observation we are finding. For okay, is for for every unique element in the set A, there is an unique element is assigned with an unique element in the set B. This is the most important observation and condition that the set are equivalent set. It means the number of element of the set A are equal to number of element of the set B. Here the sets elements are different. You see the set element of set A and B are different, but they have there is every unique element in the set A is assigned with an unique element in the set B. So in this case you can say, okay, the A equivalent to B, right? And the two equivalent sets have one one correspondence. One important property. Two infinite sets are equivalent set. Although you cannot determine their cardinality because if they have one one correspondence between them, even they are, even they have the same or different elements. It means that every unique element of the first set corresponds to every unique element of the other set. Suppose the set M is the cube of natural numbers. Another set is the set of natural numbers. You look at here. Every element in the set M is assigned to it. Uh, unique element in the set n look at here look at here look at here here 5 is assigned to 5 cube yes so every unique element is assigned to the unique element in the set n we can say the set m is equal to the set n okay even the two infinite sets are set to be equivalent equivalent set ko in odi we say sadrush set right m Equivalent to n, right? Understand? Relation between the equivalent set and equivalent set. Two sets are equal if they have exactly the same element. If their elements and the number of elements both are same, without any order and repetition of element. Already know two equal sets, the elements should be same. Natural the element number of elements should be same. But in equivalent set, the error The number of elements are always same, but the elements can be same or different. But the number of elements should be same. This is the condition relationship within the equal set and equivalent set. In equal set, the elements are same and the numbers are same. In equivalent set, the numbers are same, the element may be same or may be different. So one of the important common property between the equal set and equivalent set, the number of element. In equal set and equivalent set are same, right? Understand? But what is the difference? In equivalent set, the elements may be same, may be different, but in equal set, the element must be same, same element. In equal set, elements should be same. So equal sets are equivalent set. Every equal set is equivalent set. These are the property of the equivalent set and equivalent set. Relationship between equal set and equivalent set. Right? Classify the following the sets as equivalent set or equal set. Suppose the set A it contains a set of vowels in the English alphabet. Set B it contains a set of all letters in the word vowel. Another problem I have given the set B is X such that X is a letter in the word life, and another set A B is the element A Phi L F. Now let's see the solution. The contents consider the set A and B. Here A is the alphabet's vowels, A E I O U, and the set B B O W E L. Look at here. Here the number of element of the set A is five, and the number of element in the set B is also five. Since the number of element A is equal to number of element set B, so they are equivalent set. And again you see. The elements are also same. The set A and B are also equal. Yes or no? The equivalent set are also equal set. But this set you see the life E L I F E, right? Another set A F I L E. We see here in both the sets we have the same elements, hence they are equal sets. Yes or no? 
yes right and all element of the set e and f are same uh, because you see the element l also the element of the set e and also the element of the set f and i is an element of the set b also element of the set b and f belongs to e also f belongs to e so they are equal set as well as the equivalent set right okay another point overlapping sets two sets are said to overlapping if at least one element from the set a is present in the set b for example the set a is equal to 246 and the set b is equal to 486 48 10 two sets are there and you see the element 4 is present in the set a as well as in the set b here 4 is an element of the set a right here 4 is an element of the set a no element of the set b right okay right so so if the both elements are the both sets are common element here four is the common element if the two sets are the common element the set to be the okay the, then the sets are said to overlapping sets a and b are overlapping sets if they have any common element right understand yes here four is an element of the set a and 4 is an element of the set b so since 4 is the common element of both the set a and b so b a and b are said to be overlapping set right look at the venn diagram here overlapping sets okay here 4 is the element you see 4 is the element common element in the common area intersecting area okay so both the sets are said to be the set a and b are said to be what overlapping sets clear yes degenerate sets non overlapping sets in the two sets are said to be degenerate set if there are no common element in both the sets for example the set a is 1 2 3 4 and the set b is equal to 5 6 7 8 you see is there any common element no element in the set a are in b and no element in the set b are in a okay so both the sets are said to be degenerate sets and non overlapping sets two degenerate sets have no common element no doubt here is the diagram venn diagram for you look at here suppose uh, the set 1 2 3 4 it contains another set contains 6 5 7 8 see the set a and b are non overlapping set or disjoint set and disjoint set they never intersect right and having no common element so if the sets having no common element are said to be disjoint sets if the set having common element are said to be overlapping sets another important definition of the set that is the universal set the universal set is a collection of all element or members of all the related sets known as its subset under our consideration if number of sets are the subset of a given particular set then the set is known as the given set is known as universal set okay for example the universal set is the set of all the people in the world the set of all the people in the world the set of all the people in each country can be considered a subset of the universal set all the people of india is a part of world so india is a subset of the universe world okay similarly if all the stars in a milky way galaxy another interesting example okay of universal set all the stars in the milky way galaxy is a nice example of the universal set if we consider all the stars in the milky way galaxy the set of all students in the school is universal set if we consider the set of different students of different classes 
reading in the same school. Student different classes. If you take the student of different classes by taking the set, and they must be the student of same schools. The set of all people living in different states in India are subsets of our country in India. It means you will consider the different states, number of sets, and all those state sets are the subset of a given particular set, then such kind of set is said to be universal set. The set of people living in different states is a part of our country. Thus the country, our country is a what type of set? Universal set. Thus the set of people in India is universal set. The universal set is denoted by letter capital U and is a set containing all the elements of all its subset. See an interesting example for you here. Let us consider an example with the three sets A, B, C are given and A is a set elements 2, 4, 6 and B is an element 1, 3, 7, 9, 11, C is a set 4, 8, 11. Can you make an universal set? We need to find universal set of all the sets A, B, C. So, all the elements of a given set are contained in the universal set as per the definition. So, the universal set U of the set ABC is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11. And clearly you see the set A is a, all the element of the set A are in the set U, universal set. So, A is a subset of U. Similarly, B is a subset of U and C is a subset of the universal set U. It means all the sets under consideration are the subset of a particular set, then the set U, that particular set given set is known as universal set. Right? Here is another example, interesting example for you. Consider that there are three sets namely X, Y, Z. The element of each sets are given below. The element, okay? Here the element, the set Y contain the element. Look at the elements of the set X, Y, Z. Find the universal set of this set x, y, z. Look at here. We know that the universal set contains all the element of the given set and the subset of the universal set. The set x must be a subset of universal set u. The set y must be a subset of universal set what u and the, sets, and the set z must be a subset of universal set u. Right? So, you have to write the universal set. We can write it as, okay? Here the elements of the universal set and clearly you see all the element of the universal set okay, contain all the elements of the set x, y, z and all the element of the x are in the set u. So, x is a subset of u. Similarly, all the element of the set y are the element of the set u. So, the y is a subset of u. Similarly, z is a subset of u. So, understand? So, these are the all sets are subset of u. That's why under consideration if the number of subsets, number of sets are the subset of a given particular set, then that set is known as universal set. The universal set contains all the element of the different sets. Then you can say that is an universal set. Right? Here is the universal set diagram I am doing, Venn diagram, rectangular set. See here, look at here. Okay, here the set X, here the set Y, here the set Z, here the set, okay, you see here, look at here, look at here. Clearly see, the X and Z are overlapping set, X and Z, what are the common element? The common element you see clearly uh, of the set is what? Here 4 is an element of the set A, also 4 is an element of set Z. Similarly, the 8 is an element of the set X and 8 is also element of the set Z. That's why you see here it and 8 and 4 are overlapping elements, common element of the set X and Z. Similarly, uh, if you see set Y and Z and here 11 is an element of the set Y, 11 is also element of the set Z. Here Z and Y are overlapping set Z, 11. Understand? Okay. Is it clear? So, these are the example of universal set. Here, universal set can be written as, okay, 
by taking all the elements of the set x, y, z. The universal set contains all the elements of the different sets. The set E contains all the elements of the set x. The set E contains all the elements of the set y. The set E contains all the elements of the set z. That's why E is an universal set. Is it clear about the universal set? Another interesting example. The set A is the set of all the people of Odisha. The set B is the set of all people in Vihar. The set C is the all people of Rajasthan. The set D is the set of all people of Kerala. Then E is the set of population of India. You can clearly understand the universal set. Look at the Venn diagram here. Yes, this set A, Odisha. Okay, understand? Look at the Venn diagram here. Okay, right? One second, see. Right? How do you represent the universal set? And here is the universal set here. Here is the universal set. An universal set must be represented by the rectangular, by the rectangle, okay, and and a subset are represented by the whole structure, right? Look at here. Another important point is the power set. One of the most important point of the uh, concept of the set theory is the power set. How to find the power set? Let's see. A power set is defined as the set of all the subset of any given set, including the empty set. And the set itself also. The power set of the set A is denoted by the notation P of A. If A is a given set, a power set can be imagined as a place holder of all subset of a given set. So, if the set is given, we have to find out number of subset, and all subset can be taken as an element. I have to write in another set that set is known as power set. In other words, the subset of the sets are the members of the element of a power set. Suppose the set is given and you have to write all subset of a given set and all the subset of a given set are taken as the element of another set and that resulting set is known as the power set. The number of element of the power set is given by 2 to the power n already it is discussed which include the power set and the set itself. The number of elements of the power set is 2 to the power n. Then note down the formula. Suppose if H is equal to the set region A is a set and contains element A, B, then write the power set of A. Clearly, you see the cardinal of the set A, number of element, how many elements it has? N is equal to, it has two elements. The total number of subset of A is equal to 2 to the power n, which is 4. So, there is 4 elements. If A has contains two elements, total number of subset has four elements. Total number of subset will be four, it has four subset. And all the subsets of A are first subset of phi is a subset of A. Second, A is a subset of A because uh, every subset is a subset of every set is a subset of itself. And first point, every null set is a subset of even set. Here, every set is a subset of itself. Here, uh, if you write the element A as in the form of set is also a subset of the set A. Similarly, uh, here you take the B as the element and write the B in the form of set by giving curly bra brackets and you see this it becomes set which is a subset of the set A. There is the power set by taking all the subset in a given set okay, as element. See, all the elements are written as element and have included the curly bracket. So, it becomes set and that set is known as nothing known as power set. So, the power set of A is P of A is equal to phi A, okay, set A and set B. <coughs> right? Understand? Look at once again here. How to find the power set of the set A by taking all the subset of a given set. Write the power set of the set S. Here, the set S is equal to 1, 2, 3. The cardinal of the set S is equal to N of S is equal to 3. It has 3 elements. So, total number of subset of the set S, which is 2 to the power N, which is 8. It has 8 subsets. The total number of element in the power set is also 8. Because the total number of elements, total number of subset of the set A are also the 
same as the number of element of the power set of the set S. All the subset of S are first you see first subset what if y is a subset of the set S because the empty set is a subset of every set. Here S is a subset of S, every set is a subset of itself. Here the set 1 is a subset of S, the set, set 2 is a subset of S and the set 3 is a subset of S. So, you are getting here, here another point you see subset 1 and 2, you take 1 and 2 here. By taking 1 and 2 as the element in the form of set, is also subset of S. Similarly, this, the taking the element 1 and 3 as the, okay, here and as set. And is also subset of S. Similarly, uh, here the element 3 and 2 and 3 taken as written in the form of set with the curly bracket is also subset of the set S. Right? Okay. So, you have to write all the, the power set you can write by taking all the subset as element here for the set 1, 2, 3, the set 1, set 2, set 3, set 1, 2, set 1, 3, set 2, 3. So, these are the uh, power set. Uh, so you can find out the power set by taking uh, all the elements, okay, by taking all the subsets of a given set, okay, understand? Here is another question, very interesting question, most vital question, okay, so that the n of p of p of phi is equal to 4, the number of power set of power set of power set of phi set is 4, how you see? We know that the phi set is no element and number of element in the phi set is 0. So, the power set has one element. So, it has since it has, so the power set has one element which is power of phi, okay, the p of phi is phi which is an element of the set. If then you see if you take the power of power set, power set of power set of phi, you see it has one element. So, number of subset will be 2 to the power 1 which is 2 to the power 0. So, it has one element, 2 to the power 1 is how much? 2. So, the power set of P of P of phi is phi and another set phi. Clear? And again, you see it has how many elements? Two elements. So, number of element of the P of P of phi, which is also 2. It has two elements. So, you can say total number of subset 2 to the power n, which is 2 to the power 2, which is 4. Clear? Understand? So, number of proper subset of P of P of P of phi, which is, how many element you see? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, set 5, you see, these are the first sets. So, it has total number of uh, element P of, number of element of P of P of P of phi, which is 4. Clear? So, here is an assignment for you. Uh, these are the most vital questions I have discussed for you. Most vital concept has been discussed to you and it covers all the basic concept, definition of the types of set has been really described. I will okay. I'll be thankful to you for your patience and eagerness. Once again, thank you for your interest and eagerness. Let us go once again and again. Okay, the basic concept set theory is most vital. And then in next class we shall discuss the set operation and application of the set theory in solving the various problem. With this, thank you for your once again, thank you for your patience, interest and eagerness for the class.